If you thought the assault on freedom of speech was bad in America, just wait until you find out what's happening in the Middle East. The country of Turkey is pushing to illegalize criticism of Islam. Now, this is not the first time something like this has happened. In fact, in recent years, there's been a push across Europe to criminalize so-called Islamophobia. But what Turkey is doing is actually worse. They're trying to block all criticism of Islam on the grounds that any form of criticism is based in Islamophobia or xenophobia. And if that precedent is set, I don't think it'll stop there. With me now to break this down from the Center for Security Policy, Kyle Scheidler. Kyle, good to see you. Thanks, Liz. It's always a pleasure. All right, Kyle, talk to me about this. So a government official from Turkey wants the European Union to criminalize Islamophobia, but they're defining Islamophobia as any criticism, any negative comment whatsoever about the religion of Islam um, because they say that any criticism of it, even disbelief in it, uh, is based in xenophobia. That is absolutely insane. Yes, it is, but this is part of a process that has been underway for some time. The Turks in Europe are now the leading edge of this effort, primarily uh, through multilateral forums like the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. But it's really an overall effort we're seeing worldwide orchestrated by the Organization for Islamic Cooperation, which is the sort of multilateral summit of all of the heads of state of various Islamic countries. And so they have been pushing this effort to criminalize what they call defamation of Islam uh, or Islamophobia for quite some time now and with a great deal of success. And what we're seeing is that they use European style hate speech laws to sort of enforce uh, this speech standard. And it, this uh, hate speech standard is being picked up by social media organizations like Facebook and Google. Uh, and so it's having a tremendous effect not only in Europe but also in the United States. Right, and it's dangerous. I mean, this, this is what the government official said. This is a quote from him. He said, there's no ideology or terminology called Islam Islamism. There is only one Islam, and it means peace. I mean, he says this. And at the same time, I mean, we're talking about Europe here. We cover on this show all the time the terrorism, the murders, the atrocities, uh, the so-called lone wolves, the terror cells in Europe, all these horrible uh, things that are done in the name of Islam. I understand that some Muslims want to make that distinction between peaceful Muslims and those who pervert the religion, and that's fine. I don't have a problem with that distinction. But to suggest that there's no ideology of radical Islam and therefore any criticism of it uh, is based in a misunderstanding that this religion is peaceful, I mean, I, I, I can't even believe that this is picking up traction. Well, this actually piggybacks on something that uh, now Turkish President Erdogan said, which is that there is no moderate Islam. He refused to accept that uh, outsiders were, would be permitted to make any distinction. And so, you know, they don't want us to be able to comment about uh, Islamist-run mosques, mosques that engage in indoctrination of individuals for uh, terrorism or who recruit uh, for people to join the Islamic State. They uh, use this term, Islamophobia, even to target uh, government counterterrorism policies. And they, they took particular exception, for example, to the efforts in France, which were only put into place because of the horrific attacks uh, that, that the Parisian people suffered uh, at the Bataclan and elsewhere. So they, they take any objection to what is going on in Europe uh, through the, these Islamist networks. Uh, if you object to that at all, you are considered an Islamophobe, and they hope to make your objections illegal. Right, which is which is absolutely shocking. I can't imagine living uh, in a nation or living in a continent, living in a union like the European Union, where you're not even allowed to say, "Listen, that's crazy that you know that Muslim is making his wife uh, wear a hijab or that he's not letting her drive a car." Like, imagine that you not being allowed to say that, or you would be the one that was thrown in jail for hate speech. Absolutely ridiculous. Liber liberals tell us, though, Kyle, and I, I want to get into this before we get out of uh, run out of time for this segment. Liberals tell us that Turkey is moderate, that Turkey is an example of a country that is moderate with Islam. This stuff is stemming from Turkey. I don't understand that disconnect. Well, it's a problem that uh, a lot of our policymakers have, which is they refuse to update their understanding of Turkey from the sort of secularist, Kemalist Turkey that existed in the past, that was a good friend of the United States, that helped us fight communism uh, and the Soviets. They refuse to update uh, to the modern time where Erdogan's Turkey is uh, increasingly uh, authoritarian. Uh, they are the number one uh, imprisoner of uh, journalists. Um, 
They are very, very aggressive uh, Islamists, uh, spreading their efforts across the globe in cooperation with uh, the Muslim Brotherhood and similar organizations. These people are not our allies, and we need to stop treating them as if they were. Right, and I think that's something uh, liberals are unwilling to admit. It's ironic that you brought that up, too, about Turkey being the number one nation, the people who imprison the most journalists on this World Press Freedom Day. I think they have over, uh, I think they have over 80 journalists who are in prison in Turkey right now for telling the truth or saying something critical of the government. And now the Turkish government wants that same standard to apply to anyone who criticizes the religion of Islam, something we need to acknowledge and we need to uh, step away from. Kyle, I appreciate you coming on the show. Thanks for being here.